you feel the history of the suffering that went on in this place. Of all the places we've ever investigated, this has the strongest energy that I've ever felt. We'll hear footsteps and we'll hear voices. We'll hear running, we'll hear yelling. Hello? If there's someone in here with us and you're alive, that sounded like someone moving around me. When I got up there, there was nobody there. There wasn't even enough time for them to run back downstairs. Say help. Do you need help? There was just like a, almost a dark energy the history of the place represents. If I leave that right there, can you? What the f***, dude? <laughs> All right, Dave, so we are spending the night tonight at the Indiana State Sanatorium. Yes, we are. We're on our way right up uh, the main drive right now to the building. And I think we are going to see it here pretty soon. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because if you think about it, tuberculosis was one of the most deadly diseases in American history. And this compound, this hospital was to separate them to stop the spread of the disease and hopefully cure it. And it led to a lot of deaths. And of course, that leads to paranormal activity. A lot of deaths here, I'm sure, from, you know, like you said, tuberculosis and probably old age and many other things. And uh, Wait, there it is. Oh, wow. Holy crap, look at the water tower over there. It's literally a self-sufficient compound. This is crazy. I think this is gonna be a very interesting location to, to get under our belt. Look at that. Holy crap. You wanna go in and see what this place looks like? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Tuberculosis was a highly contagious bacterial disease uh, that had no cure. But by the early 20th century, uh, the United States and people around the world really thought there was a scientific method that could be applied to the treatment of tuberculosis. And that is what caused the many states around the country to open tuberculosis sanatoriums. I do believe that this place is haunted by the residents that have once roamed here. Being here, it's definitely more of like a feeling of depression or more or less a feeling of dread that someone does not like being here. We'll hear footsteps and we'll hear voices. We'll hear running, we'll hear yelling. The Indiana State Sanatorium was really designed with the best practices in mind. The patients at a tuberculosis hospital would spend 15, 16, 17 hours a day out of doors. It would be on a screen porch on a south facing exposure. Um, the fresh air and the sunlight really went a long way to helping them survive. Initially, when the sanatorium first opened, there was maybe an 80% annual fatality rate. People just weren't surviving. By the time they got here, they were in pretty dire shape. Um, 10 years in, they had gotten the annual death rate down to maybe 10%. Dave, we are now down here in the tunnels. This is really cool because we are completely underground. We are completely underground. We're completely by ourselves. As far as we know, there are three buildings that we're gonna focus on on this property tonight, even though there's more than that here. There's no way we'd be able to cover all of them. No. So the tunnel is going to lead us to the original 1908 tuberculosis building. Then we're also going to focus on the nursing home that was built in 1987. And we're also going to focus on the Adams building. Now, all of these buildings were used throughout its history, and all of them saw a lot of hardship and death. A lot of hardship here, a lot of hard times. So let's walk down through these tunnels and see if we can get into the building. 
and see what it looks like in there. Okay, let's do it. Now, one thing that we need to note is as we're walking through here, this tunnel is infested with cave crickets. Right, Dave? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm on the border of having a anxiety attack. <laughs> um, but I'm trying not to look at them. I'm trying to look it straight into this light so I don't see them. Guys, I'd sit in a room with a freaking demon any day rather than sit with some cave crickets or bugs or spiders or any of that crap. Oh no. Oh God, there's a huge one right there on the wall. You got it, come on. Oh, it's tweaking at me. <laughs> come on. Just go, just go. Ah! There's another one over there. There was high hopes when penicillin was invented that it was going to have a major impact on tuberculosis. But it wasn't until the mid to late 50s that they really uh, came up with a, a triple therapy that cured tuberculosis, that actually cleared the tuberculosis bacilla from the body. The cure for tuberculosis came in the late 1950s. Um, they closed the facility in 1968. We are, as soon as we step through that door, we are no longer in the tunnels and we are now in the original 1908 Indiana State Sanatorium building tuberculosis hospital. You think about the number of people that died in here because tuberculosis was one of the most deadly diseases in, in United States history. Yeah. But during the early years of the Indiana State Sanatorium, there was 70, 80% fatality rates. And so if you had 300 people here at those times and you had 70% fatalities, that could be 200 people a year that perhaps passed. Dude, this staircase is crazy cool. Wow, holy crap. It just goes up. And you going up? Yeah. Now, apparently there was a wall right here Apparently there was a wall here and the wall was just recently torn out because they had blocked off this upper floor. And it was just two months ago that they took this wall down. So we're going to actually get to go up here probably for the first time in decades. Yeah, you can even, if you look at the wall there, you can see the paint color separation that goes. And that's where you're, where it was all walled off and you couldn't even get up here. Anytime you have this, especially from the tuberculosis era, you know, you seal off a floor and nobody goes on there. You're gonna have a lot of energy trapped. I might, agree. Might be an area that we wanna focus on. Abandonment, maybe? Maybe. But in the nursing home, I don't like the nursing home. It just kinda like, feel, you can feel the sadness of it. But it was in 1976, a group of accountants uh, trying to uh, make money in the nursing home business decided to purchase the property and build a nursing home here. Oh, wow. Well, we've now entered the nursing home's clothes bedding and drapes from admin building. It's just all still here. It's all still here. Like, look at this. A bunch of stained and dirty pillows and linens. It you looks know, like blood, honestly. Yeah, well, yeah, that stain does right there a little bit. They made an agreement with uh, the county that the sanatorium was in. If they built a new facility, state of art facility here, that the county would then close their facility. And upon that agreement, they spent several million dollars uh, building a nursing home, tearing down some of the old tuberculosis hospital buildings, built a new facility, hired its staff, and when they were completed, they approached the county and asked, hey, uh, we're ready for you to close your nursing home and give us the patients you said you would give us. And the county said, no, nah, we think we'll keep it open for a while. So they had a new facility, state of the art, and no patients. It literally feels like they just picked up and left a few days ago because all the curtains are still hanging between the beds. Yeah. The hair on my arms is standing up. This is. This is creepy, man. This is going to be nuts tonight. It is. And at that point, a mental hospital in northern Indiana was being closed, and the state was rather desperate for a place to move uh, mental patients. 
And from 1980 to 2012, it operated both as a mental hospital for people who were involuntarily committed and a nursing home. I was a housekeeper here from 2006 to almost the ending of 2009. I worked on the fourth floor as a housekeeper. And after lunch, they kind of made like the guys go downstairs to like the smoke shack or to activities or something so I can clean their rooms. Nobody was supposed to be on the floor. And as I'm taking my car out, all of a sudden I seen a man on like, the, I'm thinking it was like the West Wing and he's like coming down. I'm like, put my cart back in the closet really quick and ran down the hall because there was supposed to be nobody up there. When I got up there, there was nobody there. There wasn't even enough time for them to run back downstairs. And like I said, the site was really designed to be a nursing home, but instead they put 120 mental patients in there, two to a room and men and women co-ed. And so you can kind of guess what kind of uh, outcome that would have. Mostly through here, or on this floor specifically, I do feel like people have been choked, beaten, not by the doctors and the nurses. I feel like it's more by patients that's been here. I don't believe anyone had ill intent for the patients. Everybody did the best job that they could, but I think the situation was a little beyond them. They just, they mixed the people with bipolar, schizophrenia with nursing home people, and those didn't always necessarily meet good ends. Then there's stories of people going out naked in the wintertime and freezing to death. Uh, there's stories about people jumping off the roof and going through the awnings. Towards the end, there was issues with licensing. They lost their license for quality of care issues. And finally, they were just shut down. But we've also heard that this is the most active building and it is five floors and that's why we wanted to concentrate on this building. It's important to us that we do spend a lot of time in Adams Hall because there's so much energy that can be tapped into. And they say there's a lot of, a lot of communication here. Investigating wise, I've seen a woman on the fifth floor come out of a window and just float down onto a roof. And cleaning here, we've heard women singing, giggling, we've heard people running. We've seen things move around by themselves without many an explanation at all. All right, so we just made it up to the top, all five flights of stairs. We're getting ready to walk in to the fifth floor where again, we were told that there was a suicide by hanging. I don't know if it happened when I worked here, but supposedly there was somebody that had hung herself. Do you remember which one it was? I think it was room 509. So that's the number we're gonna have to look for is room 509. Okay. You feel the history of the suffering that went on in this place. Uh, people uh, during the tuberculosis era came here for hope because this was their only chance at life, was a chance to get better, a chance to return to their family. But many of them never left. There's 506, there's 505. So there's just like a kind of a, almost a dark energy that uh, the history of the place represents. Bathroom. Oh man, here it is, 509. This is it. It's very interesting when you think about the amount of suffering, hardship, and death that these walls have seen because there's so much history with this building and almost none of it is good. You can, well, you know, like you said, the walls have seen a lot of, a lot of emotions and you can feel it in here. Well, what do you think? You think it's time for us to try and tackle this huge property? The sun is, is going down now as we speak, so we're really gonna have to jump on this and get started. It's time to maybe set up some cameras for abandonment and see what we can capture. Might as well I say we jump right into it. Let's do it.
All right, so we've collected two of the three abandonment cameras. We are standing out in front of the Indiana State Sanatorium. Dave and I are gonna go inside and get the last of the three, which is in the nursing home. We got some really creepy vibes from that nursing home. So that's where we're gonna start. I'm interested to see what happens with it just being the two of us on this entire property tonight. Just seeing what happens. I think we're gonna get something good tonight. So. This, uh, this nursing, this nursing home area, man, is really jacked up. Yeah. Like, the hair on my arms is already standing up. Like, look at that. Yeah, mine, mine is too. But you know what's so crazy about it is, is it's like, it's not just a nursing home, because they had to demolish tuberculosis hospital buildings to build this. Just the death that this, pro this property is associated with, I mean... They estimate for over 4,000 deaths. It's insane. Yeah. We're back. We're walking down the hallway. If there's anybody here with us, could you sit down in that chair? take this flashlight, I'm gonna run directly back the direction that we just came to get a new camera battery for the camera that um, was running abandonment because we didn't anticipate that it would be dead. I'm gonna be back in less than five minutes after getting that battery and I need the keys too. I don't necessarily wanna stay in here by myself. You don't? No, I'll go get the battery. <laughs> okay, you'll go get the battery. I don't like, I don't like it in here. I'll like, stay in here by myself. Like, I'm gonna go on record and say, like, of all the places we've ever investigated, this nursing home area has the strongest energy that I've ever felt of wow. any place. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So I don't necessarily feel comfortable being in here by myself. So I'm gonna set this over here. If there's anyone here with me, my name is Ryan. My friend Dave walked outside for just a minute to go and get a battery for one of our cameras. We'd love it if you'd come out and talk to us. We've heard a lot of stories about the things that you've done and the people that you've talked to. How long have you lived here? Just heard movement down the hallway. Hello? Dave's coming back. Good morning, EVP session. This is Ryan. Dave went to get a battery. I'm currently alone in the nursing home segment. I can very strongly sense the fact that you're around right now. If that is true, there's a red light right behind me. Can you try and pick it up? Dude, I got chills. I'm telling you, man. There's something literally right here with us. I don't know what it is. I got a bad feeling. Like I got a really uneasy feeling from down this way as we were standing right here. You want to walk down? Yeah. We can very clearly feel that there's someone around us right now. My name's Ryan, this is Dave. We're just here to talk to you. We're not here to intrude. We're not staff. What? I don't, 
I just heard something way down here. We want to know what life was like here for you. In that chair down there, there's a light. If you sit on it or touch that light, you could make it go off. I don't know if you can see it or not. What room are you in? Can you knock in the room where you're in or maybe shut the door for us so we know? something right down here that just moved. What was that? Hello? Did someone make a noise down here? Did someone move something? Did someone just walk through here when I set that down? Please step back away, away from that. I told you. Thank you for that. My name is Ryan. This is Dave. Thank you for showing us that you're here. Could you step back close to that again so we can see you? Or maybe you would like to move something for us. Can you close one of these doors down through here? I don't think that the REM pod hasn't gone off like that for a long time. Right, yeah, I've not seen it go off like that in a long time. And even though we are walking down this way, guys, there's still a recorder with the REM pod and there's a camera down there covering both of those, so. Ooh, I've got yeah, man. chills. The hair is standing up on the back of my arms right now. Yeah. I feel like there's something near us. Are you the same person? Ooh, it just got really cold. Man, it got really cold right here. Literally, right as soon as I said that, it got super cold. That's the weirdest thing ever, man. What? They left so abruptly when they shut this place down, there's literally fresh garbage bags in the garbage can still. Yeah. They left the trash can, set outside the door with fresh trash bags in it. It's like one day this place was open, the next it wasn't. Pretty much. That 
sounded like footsteps. Yeah, it was walking. Hello? What was that? I've not heard anything like that, man. Look, look, listen. Hello? If there's someone in here with us, and you're alive. That sounded like someone moving around, man. We don't care that you're in here, just say so. That was full on walking. And now it just stopped. We need to go, we need to go before we unlock it. Let's see if there's a here. That was full on walking. And now it just stopped. That was full on walking. And now it just stopped. That recorder picked that up for sure. We're gonna come around the corner here, so. Again, if there's an explorer or somebody in here, we don't care. Dude, that was, that we literally heard footsteps. Yeah, for like 20 or 30 seconds straight. Yeah, that was, in, that was, I thought there was someone in this building. Yeah, me too. Sometimes we like to experiment with this application from our friends, Amy and Jared, over in Australia from the channel Amy's Crypt, just to see if we can pick up on anything relevant. Come on down to 402 and talk with us. Was that in here? Miss. 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 Who do you miss? Your family? Thank you for talking and using that. You can use it to make more words to send, send more of your message. Stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine it would be stressful in a place like this. Cousin. How high do you have that turned up? Like I always have it. As high as I had it when we had it on the walkthrough at the Bulby and it only said like three words. Portal. You can use that, but you have to use it to say words that mean something. Satanic. Really? What was that? I don't know. It was right beside me. Did you move over here underneath the bed? Tell you what, we need to get the other camera ready, and I think we should split up. There's two more buildings that we need to get, and we need to cover them. So I think it'd be a good idea if you went over to the administrative tuberculosis building, and I'll go over to the to Adams Hall by myself. We'll split up and see what we can get. All right, so we split up and Dave and I are now going into separate buildings and I am going to be by myself in the infamous Adams Hall. I get this whole building.
right here all to myself. So let's see what happens. Everyone says this is the building that you have to concentrate on. This is the building that has the paranormal activity. Well, we'll find out. All right, guys, this is Dave. I am headed into the administration building, and we are going to see what we get. Hello to anybody in here. My name is Dave. And I've decided to come in here for a little bit and speak with you. Are you in here with me? I'm going to go room 509, which is the room where they say there was a patient that took his own life. I don't know if it happened when I worked here, but supposedly there was somebody that had hung herself. Uh, it sounded like something just tapped on metal there. That was weird. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit on edge here. I can feel somebody's energy and that's okay. That's why I'm here. I wanna talk to you. I have a box right here. But it's believed if you walk up to me and speak, that I'll be able to hear your voice. What did you say? I'm good. Who is the man's voice I just heard? My name's Ryan and I'm just here to talk to you. Are you gonna come out and talk to me? I actually thought I just saw you right around the corner there. I really did. I thought I saw a white shadow peek around that corner. Was that you? Is that hell? Do you need help? If you need help, speak. 
speak to this box again. Or go over there to the doorway and see if you can touch that glowing red light down there. Is there anybody up here with me? In the administration building with me? Anyone in here? I keep hearing noises. You guys, seriously? And I don't know why. Something about the energy at this place is just insane. It hasn't been a lot of interaction with the equipment so far. But there's been a lot of personal interactions. Ooh, I just got chill. The hair stood up on my neck. This is the fourth floor. That could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I thought I saw a shadow cross in front of this doorway right here. Hello? Did you want to get my attention? Did you want me to come into this room? If I leave that right there, can you? What the f Holy sh**. Oh, I hope that action cam caught that. I mean, I'm sure it did. F dude. I got chills so bad. I saw a shadow pass in front of this door. So I walked in there and set the REM pod down. And immediately after I set the REM pod down and walked away and I said, if, <laughs> can you go over and touch that? It literally touched it on command. You guys don't have anything to be afraid of. I won't hurt you, and I hope that uh, you won't do anything to hurt me, because that wouldn't be cool. Put some kind of beeping, I don't know what that was. Because that wouldn't be cool. I'm very sorry that you ended up here with tuberculosis. And if you passed away from it, I'm sorry that that happened before they found the cure. But they did find a cure for it. If you were trying to get my attention, there's this box right here in my hand. I still feel you, I feel chills. I will back out of the room. Actually, I'll set it down beside the light you just touched there. And I will back away. What's your name? My name's Ryan. If 
you talk into that little orange light, it'll let me know that you're here. Well, I'm gonna head back out now. Not too much going on. If you were in here and you did speak with me, thank you very much, I'm sorry. If you went through something traumatic in here, All right, so I met back up with Dave and we decided that because we didn't want to do this building a disservice, we wanted to make sure that we got to investigate Adams Hall thoroughly. Yes. And that solo that I did, even though I got to cover a couple of the floors and had a couple of creepy things happen, I, I feel like this building is still untapped. There's still a lot of places that we can investigate in here. So we are getting ready to go back inside Adams Hall and we're going to see what we can get. Right, Dave? Hopefully some of these spirits here will talk to us. It's been an interesting night so far, so um, I think we're going to do an Estes method in here. Yeah. And uh, see if we can make further communication with the folks here. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. Any particular area that you want to go to? I kind of want to go back up to the fourth floor, right by that room 405, because that was creepy with that REM pod activity. If I leave that right there, can you... What the f***, dude? Okay. When that REM pod went off, it about made my heart stop. I will say this building has a different energy than I was just about to say already, right at my back. There it is again. Do you smell that? Mm-hmm. It smells like sweet tobacco. Now it's going. Are you? Are you? Do, do, do. You okay? Feel, put your hand over here. Feel by my hand. It's ice cold. Oh yeah, I feel that. Holy crap. Are you here with us? Did you grab the red pod? Yes. It's in my hand right here. Do you want to sit up here just for a sec? Yes. My hand. My right hand is freezing cold. Okay. We can smell your perfume or something that you have. Can you go up to one of those red lights and try and make it go off for us? We just want to talk to you. We're going to go up to the fourth floor. Can you follow us up there? Here we are. Yeah, okay. Just a weird vibe. Which room are we going to? Oof. What? You can just feel it, man. Yeah. It's down this way. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. This is the one. That's so weird. Ooh, we just got chills. Dave is over there. He is alone in room 405. Are you upset that we're here and in your room? We 
brought some lights up, some toys right there in the hallway, some lights that you can touch. Can you touch those for us? It was a joke. It was a joke. Are you trying to play jokes on us? Are you trying to play some sort of game? Nine years. Nine years? Nine years, is that how long you were here? Ooh, I got chills. Were you here for nine years? There are others, I think it said. There are others. How many others are there? How many of you were here? Where'd you go? Are you near Dave right now? Please don't affect him that way and give him a headache. What happened in that room? What happened in room 405? He can't see? Was the patient in that room blind? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Well, we're sorry if you were blind and you couldn't see us. We're so sorry to hear that you were blind. Do you want us out of your space? I'm gonna stop this. Okay. Oh my God. What's wrong? My head is killing me. Was any of that relevant? You said blind and I asked if the man that was in that room was blind and said, um, or no, you said he can't see. And I said, is the man, the man that was in that room blind? And it said, yeah. Oh wow. Which was kind of weird. That is weird. But do you think your headache's a product of the at the S box sweep, or do you think it's a product of the energy in here? Uh, the S box. The S box. If I had to guess, this is a massive compound. It's huge, and so we did not get a chance to do all the buildings. We didn't get a chance to explore all the history. But that just means maybe one day we'll have to come back. Oh yeah, we'll be back, especially with the other boys. Yeah, this is a fantastic location with a lot of energy, a lot of sadness, but most of all, there's a lot of paranormal activity here. But all of it goes towards the ultimate goal of restoring this property. And just for a second here, I'll let Greg take over and tell you what he's looking to do with the property and how people can get involved and help save the Indiana State Sanatorium. Our Facebook page and our Instagram account is The Sanatorium Project. Um, if you're interested in paranormal investigations, it's Haunted Indiana Sanatorium. We're always looking for volunteers at the Indiana State Sanatorium. We have work restoring the old buildings. We have work maintaining the grounds. We have work uh, doing historical research. You don't even have to come to the Indiana State Sanatorium to help out with the project. We have tens of thousands of pages of historical documents that we uh, retrieve from the Indiana State Archives and taking photographs of. We need help going through all the documents. So uh, if you're interested in helping out the project, there's an unlimited number of things to do. So there you go, guys. If you want to get involved, contact them on Facebook, figure out uh, different ways that you can help save the Indiana State Sanatorium. But of course, one of the best ways is to get out here and investigate too. So this is an incredible place you don't want to miss out on. But, yeah, don't sleep on this one, guys. But for now, we're going to end the investigation here, and we are going to go pack up all the stuff. We are going to go get some sleep, because soon enough we'll be doing it all over again. We can't wait to bring you guys along for the ride. 
So subscribe, turn on bell notifications, like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and family. We'll see you next week.